So now let us discuss about what do we mean by the solution of an equation and when I say equation it implies the algebraic equation. So put in simple words the value of the variable in an equation which will satisfy the condition imposed on the variable is called the solution of an equation. So if we take our earlier example where we said that 2n equals 10 and then how do I find out that which value of n will lead to this. So one way of looking at it is like this. So in an equation there are two parts. We have 2n equals 10. We say that this side is the right hand side. Uh, right hand side. And this side of the equation is the left hand side. And what we have to do is for this, this left hand side the value of n should be such that it equals to the value at the right hand side. So now what can I put here? What should the value of n be such that it results in 10? Same as so if we know 2 multiplied by 5 gives me 10. right? When I put n is equal to 5 then I get 10 on both the right hand side and the left hand side. And then we say that n the value of n equals 5 is the solution for this algebraic equation that is 2n minus 10. Now, we have learned a very simple method. What we said is, okay, I know that when I multiply 5 with 2, I get 10. Now, this is kind of a trial and error method in which we try out some, just some trials and then we reach to a solution, right, to this equation. But in your higher classes, onwards we will be discussing more systematic methods to find out the solutions to algebraic equations. So for now let us try to look at some examples. Now these examples look huge but they are pretty simple so let's go through them pretty fast. Now what, what we have to do here is that we are given an equation, we are given the value of the variable and we just have to say whether the equation is satisfied by the value of the variable that we take. So these are all equal to signs. Now 10y minus 80. Okay 10y minus 80. So what happens if sorry this is 10y equals 80. All these are equal to signs. So we are saying that 10y equals 80 and when I say y equals 10 does it satisfy. So when I put 10 so 10 times 10 is 100 and 100 is not equal to 80. That is, let me just do it here. So we have 10 times y equals 80, which implies that it is 100 not equal to 80. Therefore, this is not satisfied. The equation is not satisfied. No. Now we have 10y is equal to 80 and y is equal to 8. So what happens when I put y equals 8 in this? So 10 times 8 is 80. Yes. So in this case, the equation is satisfied with the value of y equals 8. Now if I say 10y equals 80 and we say y equals 5, again 10 times 5 is 50. When I put this in the, so just writing it down, this is your left hand side and this is the right hand side. So on the left hand side, we get 10 times 5 is 50, but 50 is not equal to 80. So this equation is not satisfied for y equals 5. Now we have 4L equals 20. And when I put L equals 20, what happens? 4 times 20 is 80 on the left hand side. 80 is not equal to 20. Therefore, this the value of L equals 20 doesn't satisfy this equation. What happens if I put L equals 80? Now you can see 4 times 80 is 320, which is definitely not equal to 20. So this part also does not satisfy the equation that is L is equal to 80 is not a solution to this equation of 4L equals 20. Now what happens when we take another value of 5 of L let's say we are taking L equals 5. So 4 times 5 is 20 and it is equal to 20. So we know that left hand side equals to right hand side when I take the value of L to be 5 in that case it is the value of L equal files does satisfy the equation. So you can see that for the same equation for L equals 20, we tried three different values out of which one was satisfied. Similarly, in this equation, 
10 y equals 18 we tried three different values out of the just one value satisfied y equals 8 similarly we are going to do for the third equation b plus 5 equals 9 now what happens if i put b equals 5 we are just doing a trial and error method so 5 plus 5 on the left hand side gives me 10 which is not equal to 9 so no this does not satisfy i'll just put a cross here so that it's easier to understand rather than writing it here what happens if I take b plus 9? So I put 9 here on the left hand side. So 9 plus 5 gives me 14. It will not satisfy because 14 is not equal to 9. Therefore, b equals 9 doesn't satisfy. But what happens when we have b equals 4? So 4 plus 5 is 9 on the left hand side and 9 equals 9. So left hand side would be equal to right hand side and therefore b equals 4 satisfies the equation. So out of the three different values that we tried for b plus 5 equals 9, the solution is b equals 4. Now let us try it for the third equation where we have h minus 8 equals 5. This is our equation here and uh, let's we are trying different values. So what happens when we put h equals 13? So what happens when we subtract 13 from 8? Does it give 5? Yes it does give and therefore h equals 13 is going to be a solution of this equation. What happens if h minus 8 equals 5 and I want h to be 8? So 8 minus 8 on the left hand side is 0. 0 is not equal to 5. So therefore this is not a solution. What if I take h equal to 0? 0 minus 8 gives you minus 8. That again is not equal to 5. So this is also not a solution. So again for this equation h minus 8 equals 5 there is just one solution that is h equals 13. Now let us take the last example p plus 3 equals 1 so I am just making this equal to sign because somewhere it appears as minus but this is p plus 3 equals 1. Now let's just not look at these we will try to do it in a short way. So what value should I put for p which will give me 1 here? What is it that I should put here? which can give me 1 over here. So what happens if the value of p is minus 2? Yes, if the p is minus 2, then only it should be solved. And then only we have, so that is when I do minus 2 plus 3, it is going to give me 1. So now I know the solution and we can straight away understand the things here. So p equals 3 is not a solution p equals 1 is not a solution p equals 0 is not a solution p equals minus 1 even minus 1 plus 3 if i do on the left hand side it gives me 2 so this is also not a solution and this is minus 2 the minus doesn't seem to show up here but p equals minus 2 so in this case minus 2 plus 3 gives me 1 and therefore this is a solution so for this equation also there is just one definite solution that we have seen so this is how we can understand that there is just one definite value of a variable which will satisfy that equation which we understood using the examples.